here. Mayor, City Council, the first item that we have on the agenda is um, funding for a UEZ audit. I asked Tom Gilmore to come this evening. Um, uh, this was not on my radar. Uh, he is going to describe to City Council um, what the um, Asbury Park Zone Assistance Funds are available and a little bit about uh, the Asbury Park Zone Development Corporation. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm going to recommend that City Council uh, does not take any action on it this evening. Um, and we will be back to City Council with uh, a resolution for the audit. But uh, I thought it was appropriate at this time, Tom, um, make a presentation regarding the uh, former uh, UBC program and the current funds of that. Tom? Sure. Good evening. Um, as you know, we just went through an audit process right now. What this request is, is for the current year. Uh, which goes from July 1st until June 30th of 2014. So that was the request from the order. Um, as you know, uh, there is still some money re remaining in the UEC fund. Uh, however, we did transfer $33,613.61, which was the amount that the council um, restricted for the website. So that has been transferred from uh, the second generation account into city funds right now. So uh, Rick Cards has that money right now, and that is restricted for the website. So that has already been done. We do have uh, two loans that are still outstanding um, that will generate approximately another $14,000 uh, of uh, income to the city, and that is second generation money. Um, that's not here right now, uh, but that will, as they pay off their loans, that money will come to the city, and all the loans are current right now. Um, in addition to that, um, we still have uh, funding that is left over, uh, which the city, these are funds that the city has right now, uh, left over from the street program, and I believe they are about a hundred and um, about hundred three thousand dollars right now. I believe I'll have to check with Rick. Try to call him to find out exactly what that was, but that's that's what the remaining balance is. And again, that money is available for uh, UEZ projects. That's funding that came back to the city uh, when the state stopped funding the program. We received about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Some of it was used for outstanding programs. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars is still in a fund right now to pay debt service on fire trucks. But actually, it's less than two hundred fifty because we made some payments on that. Um, but the remaining balance that is available right now is about $103,000. So I'll get you the exact fund uh, number on that, and I'll get you the exact number of the loans outstanding. But it is about $14,000 right now. And as uh, the city manager indicated, uh, I need to bring him up on, to speed on this. Uh, so uh, I am in agreement that we table this tonight um, and bring it back at another time. Any, any questions? The only thing I was going to say is that I have a bunch of questions about the audit, so would it be helpful if I just emailed them to yep. you, Tom, and then you can... Okay, that's fine. Sure. Thank you. Tom, we'll also, uh, we have a number of um, special events. Some are new, some are returning, <coughs> and maybe Tom could walk us through each of those. Sure. Uh, the first one is Step Up for the Art. Uh, it's a walk uh, done by the Art. Uh, Nonprofit. Uh, this is an event they've done, I think, for three years right now. Great event. Uh, good fundraiser for them. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, next one is a request. Uh, last year, you know, we became one of the uh, Paint the Town Pinks. Cities Pink Park. Um, they have approached us again to be part of that. There are now 30 cities that actually participate in this. It's a great program. And it's a great economic boost for us because people come to the city and support those cities that are part of the Pain the Town Bank. And that will be for the month of May in 2014. And there's really no cost to the city as far as that's concerned. Uh, and this is sponsored by Meridian Health. They supply most of the su support materials for that. Um, we do have one new application. Uh, this is from the Rebuild by Designs. Uh, people who were here last council meeting talked about the initiatives that they were undertaking in the city. They have a request to do a parade 
uh, in the city. That will take place on March 22nd, uh, approximately 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. They are doing an event down at the Berkeley uh, Carter Rec Hotel, sort of a workshop uh, exhibit event there where uh, different vendors will be displaying different things and Rebuild will be talking about a num number of sustainable initiatives that they're undertaking as they begin uh, to develop the process for Asbury Park. As they mentioned last meeting, uh, they, Asbury Park has been chosen as one of the places that they will possibly do one of their projects in. So, um, you said possibly do one of their projects? Well, to get it funded, yeah. They have to put the project together. Uh, initially, my understanding is that they picked a number of projects, and this group will develop that project and then submit it to HUD for final approval. Specifically for Asbury Park. Specifically for Asbury Park. Okay. Because yep. I know, I mean, I just, when I first read this, they want to pull in with the city and we're picking up the cab for everything, which I, uh, as long as what's going to benefit the city, I do not the, the, They have asked us to waive the special events fees. The only fees that I see that will be part of this is really police, which we never waive. Um, so I've indicated to them that that would be the situation. There's, there's also the garbage collection. Well, um, they're only going to be marching down to the Berkeley Carter Act. First of all, I don't think it's going to be a big parade. Second of all, I don't okay. think there'll be a lot of people there. But they're going to need police yeah. across the right. street. Yeah, and they're going to pay for all that. They're going to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, just because I don't know, how does that work? Do we build, we build them beforehand and they pay for it? Yeah, with the police, the police anybody who's uh, u utilizing police during a special events contract, uh, event, they sign a, a, an individual contract with the police that designates how many police officers are involved, um, and they pay that directly to the police department. Got it. Um, then we have a number of wedding applications. <laughs> yeah, they're all fine. Um, however, uh, we have come um, have been made aware that um, the fees on some of these applications are different. Um, we changed the fees for weddings in uh, December of 2012. Um, and as I researched these, most of these ones that have the wrong fee on it came from Falco's Catering, which is a new catering company uh, down at the Berkeley Carteret, so they're using an old application. Uh, we uh, processed a number of applications from them last year, and they paid the full fee. So they're just using an old application to make sure that they get the application. So the correct fee is 100, 150, Correct fee is 100 for the application and 150 for the beach. And they pay up front all. They do, yes. RFQ 
uh, as a guide when evaluating and ranking the proposals. And those criteria included the following. One, the financial proposal offered to the city. Two, the quality of the services offered by the vendor. Three, the experience of the vendor. And four, the qualifications of the vendor, along with other requirements that are uh, prescribed by the New Jersey Administrative Office of the Courts. Following our review and ranking of the proposals, and I have all the proposals here in front of me. They're, they're weighty documents. Each one of them is a bound book, basically, that required um, a certain amount of review and abstracting to go through each and every page and document that was included as part of each proposal to ensure that they had included everything that was called for and to then um, uh, go through, and I compliment Tracy Lizardi on this because uh, she really took the lead on this project. Uh, we contacted all of the municipal uh, clients of all of these uh, vendors to find out their prior experience with the vendors, if they had, had, had good comments to say about them, and we had a whole list of questions that she went through with each and every uh, governmental agency. And uh, that was incorporated as part of a spreadsheet that the review committee then um, got together and reviewed when we were ranking these proposals. And ultimately, a determination was made by the review committee that MSV, Government Services of Austin, Texas, provided the most advantageous proposal to the city, price and other factors considered. And uh, primarily, uh, our consideration when it came to price was the fact that MSB was the only one of the vendors that had offered to rebate 10% of their commission earned in the first 100 days from uh, contract execution to the city, along with, of course, the city uh, will be recouping the, those municipal court fines and debt that they are able to get through their collection process. Um, so we do think this is advantageous, and based upon our review of these proposals, it's our opinion as a review committee uh, together, it was unanimous, that MSB uh, offered the, the most advantageous proposals the city price and other factors considered, um, and we recommend that you consider making an award of the contract to them this evening. Once an award is made by the council, the matter has to go to the New Jersey Administrative Office of the Courts for their review and approval. I expect that we should gain their review and approval uh, to this contractor because this contractor um, has worked for and is currently working for 10 other New Jersey municipalities, so the AOC is familiar with them. And they were very highly regarded by all of the uh, uh, governmental agencies that we contract, contact. Okay. Thank you. If there are no questions, uh, we'll move to the uh, next item, which is the uh, transporta transportation center leases. Um, there was a letter forwarded by um, Mr. Fetto um, on January 31st to the mayor and the city council, and um, he brought city council up to date regarding the two tenants um, that the city uh, has at the James J. Howard Transportation Center. Um, those leases have expired, and the city um, should have forwarded a, the tenants an uh, option to renew. Um, the city, it appears, failed to send that out. Um, nevertheless, we are going to seek that the uh, tenants pay the increase in rent, which should have been 3%. Um, we are going to go out and um, uh, meet with and see if the, those tenants would like to remain there. However, uh, we are also going to be meeting with the Jersey Transit to determine the ridership and how the ridership has increased from 2009 to the current day. And um, we are going to then decide on whether we should be seeking a commercial realtor to assist the city in marketing, uh, marketing the additional spaces there. When the city originally um, put out um, offers for, um, for bid, um, there were um, seven spaces and only two people were interested in 2009. Um, the ridership has picked up substantially. We believe that there may be other tenants that are looking for that space um, and, and perhaps would seek a commercial realtor to assist us in filling those spaces. Um, so uh, I am going to go out. I'm going to be meeting with the, the individuals that are there now, um, extend, and then we'll have a formal extension of, of their lease to, through the period that the, uh, the term originally allowed, and then simultaneously coming back to City Council with a determination of how we're going to move forward with leases after this lease expires. I just have one question here. In looking at this, the current vendors paid $32 and $18 respectively 
per square foot. And based on the information here, it's somewhat lower. Is there a reason for that? Because I'm looking right here, leasing approximately $12, $15 per square foot for the rents in downtown area of Asbury Park. Typically run approximately $18 to $22. Agree the, the, that there is a large difference. Now, the $12 to $15 a square foot, uh, that may be um, where it's a triple net lease and it doesn't include all of the additional expenses the, uh, the tenant may be paying. It's typical that uh, commercial tenants are paying uh, for utilities, paying for um, any of the common area maintenance, and paying for their share of real estate taxes. So I, I don't know how these numbers, the twelve to fifteen dollars per square foot numbers, um, are uh, reported, whether they're triple net or non triple net leases. If they were triple net, they would probably come closer to twenty five dollars a square foot when all those ancillary costs are added. Um, uh, the, the in, in my opinion, we would probably be best served by a commercial uh, realtor because they'll know the market um, and they'll go out soliciting us. Uh, the clients. Um, the, the, we can't twist anyone's arm in the future to pay the $32, so they may be indeed paying less as we go forward. Um, perhaps they have been overpaying, but uh, they have been paying this since they've, since they've been there according to the, the lease terms, and we will be asking them for the 3% increase uh, that the lease calls for. And we will at the, the next signing of the lease, make sure that they do pay the utilities because I understand they have not been doing so. I, I understand that as well. Yes, that will be be addressed most likely before the termination of this current lease. Okay. If there are no questions on that item. Uh, next item is the summer rental regulations ordinance. I understand that uh, uh, Fred again uh, forwarded correspondence to the City Council on, on January, the Mayor and City Council on January 31st, and this is to facilitate, um, if you will, um, how the city will regulate seasonal rentals. Um, we hope between now and the next council meeting, City Council will have an opportunity to review uh, this ordinance. Uh, this ordinance is similar to what uh, neighboring towns use. Uh, we would then take any of the comments between today and uh, the next council meeting and incorporate those in, in our renewal. I will be also simultaneously meeting with our code enforcement unit uh, to see if they have any comments or suggestions on this draft ordinance and be presenting um, an ordinance for first reading at the next meeting. So we met a couple times, I think, about the summer CO when it was initially on the table. Um, so bringing it back and then implementing it, um, obviously before Memorial Day, would be one of the major goals, right? A absolutely. We'll have it at uh, the next meeting, which would be the second meeting in February. Steve, second meeting in March, we'd have uh, an active. That would be and this, as you recall, uh, some of you may recall, was an issue that the prior council had started to move forward with, um, but we were really coming into the summer season as it was starting to be addressed, and then some issues had arisen when staff reviewed the draft of the ordinance, and there were some meetings, as Councilwoman Quinn indicated, that involved staff of the city along with um, uh, other interested parties, and for whatever reason, the prior council determined, I can't recall exactly, uh, not to move forward with it at that time, but I included with your packets the draft that existed as of then that you didn't formally move forward with back then that we could use as a template now. Uh, take another look at this, see if this matches what you're looking to do and it works um, with our, our staff and they find that it will be feasible um, to implement and make the process, the intention is to make the process easier. Right. Okay. Stream on. So. Okay. Great. Fred, I will send you some questions I have in regards to this. Item five on our workshop um, the agenda is matters by city council. Okay. John, uh, Councilman Moore. John. Uh, yesterday, the governor was in Keenesburg, and as much as he said, there's not as much FEMA money as he was hoping it would be. 
Right now, there's $1.46 billion in funding that's being applied from the Department of Housing and Urban Development through the CDBG Disaster Recovery Action Plan. And I read it real quick, but some of the numbers are there's $535 million available for infrastructure work. There's $225 million available to help government entities meet federal funding matching obligations to 9010. There's $110 million to be awarded to local governments to sustain essential services, be it police, fire, EMT, uh, DPW. And there's $5 million to encourage tourism. Do we have somebody on top of this to make sure that we're submitting applications and we're in line to get some of this money? Don't all right. We've uh, had several conversations with um, one of our local uh, assemblywomen uh, who is supporting efforts by the city all right, at this time. All right, um, you were part of the meeting that we had. We're going over all of our uh, claims for FEMA in the past, all right, and she is in the process of writing letters of support for us uh, so that way we could get some of this money. They're past, for they're past things. I'm talking about future things and applications that have to be in, I think it was like March 1st or something, it was like 90 days or whatever. I, didn't, I read it very quick before I got here, but as long as we're on top of that future funding, because looking at all the categories, we qualify for all. Can I stop you just for a minute? Can we turn down the access to if there's a reverberation?
with Ocean Grove and figure out how to do all the services. I certainly should be able to do it. Thank you, that's all I have. I have a couple more things. Um, so, the Ocean Fred and I don't know if you, if you want to just give a, a very brief update that we, we have an RFP for the parking consultant. It's been read. Um, we should be going out to advertise this week. Yes. And then conceivably, if everything goes according to plan, um, within 25 or so days, we would um, accept proposals. We would open the proposals. Open the proposals. And then evaluate. hopefully be in a position to make a recommendation of a word to the council at the first meeting in March. Okay. Hopefully. Okay, so like three little practical things. Um, for snow removal, if you are, if you have not, <coughs> your street has not been plowed and it is not normal nine to five hours, um, and I know I brought this up last time, Tony, is there any ability to contact whoever is out on the street plowing and just refresh their memory to hit the street? And the reason I say it is because I get a ton of calls from people who have alleys who their alleys are never plowed and their cars are in their alley. So unless they're waiting for the, the, um, the snow to melt, they're not getting their car out. All right. There's not going to be any way to get direct contact to the operators of the, uh, of the plows. All right. My suggestion would be is to all right, call public maintenance, all right, leave a message on the machine for public maintenance during snow emergencies. All right. They are manning the phones and they are checking all right, the messages there. Okay. So, you, so the best way to communicate with public maintenance during a snowstorm is to call them, not email call. Yeah, I mean, okay. right, they're not going to be checking emails. Okay, that's fine. The that's night, fine. Uh, <coughs> listening to the phones. Okay. Uh, so again, during uh, when when we have a snow emergency, how are we getting the word out that we're either picking up recycling, not picking up recycling, picking up garbage, not picking up garbage? Are we are we doing anything to get the word out? With that, you know, we would talk to, I'll talk to Joe Cunha about that and see what we can uh, establish. I know he's been uh, very diligent about posting things. Yeah, and he'll text uh, so. me and I'll get it on next door, but for all the people in this town who aren't on the computer, for all intents and purposes. You know, um, we would hate to use code red for that. I agree, again, I agree, uh, I agree. Um, and again, code red is extremely think about expensive it and brainstorm course. how to reach people about recycling in the garbage. We could ask about it. Okay, and then my third one is another joke. So at the parking meters, it's um, I'm I'm what's being brought up at the parking meeting, and I'm not even sure why it's brought up at the parking meeting, but it's consistently brought up at the parking meeting, is that we need a new street sweeper, and I'm, and I just wondered if you could just take me through the process on how we would go about getting a new street sweeper, and how can I help kickstart that process. I did meet with Ricky Gartz prior to the starting, and uh, he did mention that um, he had held up any capital pur purchases last year, wanting to get more familiar with the city. He believes there um, the, the city is behind in purchasing capital type of equipment. So we would normally assess what the needs of the city are. Um, Tony mentioned, uh, or you asked a general question about how do we contact uh, truck drivers. Well, I asked that question as well. We do have a radio problem, so there is a need for capital purchase of radios. Uh, there may be a need for additional CCTV cameras. Um, Joe needs some uh, equipment, uh, larger equipment uh, for plows, which happens to be with the heaviness of the snow. So we will send a um, capital request out to departments to determine what our capital needs are and we'll introduce a bond ordinance to the city council and most likely bond for the equipment. And Jack, this is going up a while back and you know, we're not here, right, and we just said, look, if we have to explain the bullet on this and do it. Nobody put up an argument at the time. I mean, it's something that we, we really need. Unquestionably. Um, you know, I, I talked to Joe and do that again. That was one of my first questions that I asked to, to Ricky, and uh, he said that there wasn't anything last year, so I only anticipate that there would be a big backlog. Um, and Joe told me of his uh, problems, and Councilman Moore referenced that he was intimately familiar with uh, their dire need for equipment, specifically snow removal uh, equipment. Uh, the mayor and I have spoke about the problems with CCTV cameras and the uh, capital requirements there. I don't so, know what a CCTV. Closer, closer, closer. Oh. 
So we know that there, I do know in my third day of the job that there is that, that need. We need to analyze it and make a proper presentation to City Council and, and bond for it. Great. And we had a conversation this afternoon when John was talking about the equipment I mean, this morning. That was possible. You know, the towns were getting. Yeah, the, 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 well, there's, once we have a funding source, we would take those funds and possibly purchase fairly, uh, uh, federal surplus equipment. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to talk to Joe today. I'm not sure if he's familiar with the uh, federal sur surplus program, but we're still going to need funds to purchase that uh, surplus um, equipment. Well, all that stuff is free. Yeah, the stuff he was talking about. The yeah, yeah. The bulldozers, the 400,000 dollars bulldozers, they're getting every town for a dollar. So, and I, I know Tommy Geronda from the fire department didn't tell you all, or now they're, they can apply for it. <coughs> the police have also, I'm not sure if Joe did. And I, who, I, I, who, who was the individual? Tom, Tom Geronda, he's a uh, battalion chief at the fire department, okay. and he's in charge of training and also has to acquire equipment like that. Once he found out about it, he just saw all the applications. The, the equipment, there's no question about it. DPW needs equipment, prior everybody needs equipment, but it's winter time. It's the wrong time to be buying winter equipment, but right now, you know, we're 45 days away from spring, so many days away from summer. And we do not have a beach tray, we do not have a tractor, we do not have screws to pick up the trash. I mean, that planning has to also be looked at right now, also. So, we're going to be sitting out here in July, so can we buy a beach tray? Can we go to the two days? Very good. Okay, there are a few things I want to mention. Um, I received several phone calls about what a wonderful job Tom Clerks did this past snowfall in cleaning the streets, and so I'd like to commend them. I've also mentioned, though, that the past couple of council meetings, we have a calendar, and I assume everyone has received their calendar now, but when the deployment of trucks go out there, I, I, I know there's a list of priorities, but I certainly would like to see those trucks going to all four quadrants so that we make sure that there's not one section that's getting covered more than the other. At the last snowfall, I did travel throughout the city, and I noticed the streets that were, were cleaned the best were the streets that were east and west. It was the north and south. I don't know if that weren't uh, cleaned that well. I don't know if that had anything to do with the blow of the wind or what. The other thing is, <clears throat> with all that snow out there, we have so many absentee landlords or residents that do not bother to clean their sidewalks. And we need to look into a way of making sure that they either do that or they receive some type of summons. So you have students coming home and even adults that are walking in the streets because the sidewalks aren't open. In, including, yes, including the cities. Because that was, someone stopped me yesterday and said, why isn't the city's sidewalk on Springwood Avenue clean? So I throw that out. I do want to mention a few other things. Um, the county prosecutor, Chris Permicioni, um, will be speaking on the subject of heroin abuse and its increasing use by the student population in Monmouth County. At, at Neptune High School on February the 12th at 7 p.m., in only one year, heroin deaths of 18 and 25-year-olds in New Jersey rose 24%. This is not good, but everyone is invited. Um, Something else that's on the legislative agenda is members of the National Bipartisan Mayors Against Illegal uh, Guns Coalition, we are right to express our strong opposition to legislation in the Senate that would permit guns in our post office. Uh, the proposal reform bill S.1486 that would override a 40-year-old U.S. Postal Service regulation and would compel all post offices in the country to allow customers to carry guns in this federal facility. So if, if you write, please write 
to your, uh, your federal legislature. Last but not least, on behalf of the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, this is a letter I received. I would like to congratulate you on being approved for a stronger New Jersey business grant, and this was directed to Marilyn Slashba. It says, we hope that your stronger New Jersey grant will meet your needs, but if you are in need of further assistance, please take a few minutes to learn about the stronger New Jersey business loan program. So it's still out there. And I think we all should commend Marilyn. And that's it for me. And welcome, Boy Scouts. I was going to say, this is the most <laughs> handsome first row I've had since I've been on since July 1. <laughs> yeah, we can have to leave this out. Um, if I could, uh, at this point, just indicate to the, uh, the crowd that um, uh, council is not going to be taking action this evening on any matters that were addressed during our executive session held uh, at 5 p.m. this evening. And also, uh, I did just want to report out on the fact that um, proposals were received and opened yesterday for the website development, design, and maintenance project, and the city received 17 proposals from interested vendors. At this point, the city manager is going to be uh, convening a review committee to narrow down the list and to make a recommendation for an award of a contract to the council at a future council meeting. That's it. Thank you. And, Mayor, that concludes our workshop uh, session and agenda. Thank you. Adjourn. So moved. All fair. Bye. Bye.